All right, guys, so today we're going to learn one thing that I like to do on reserve when I'm looking to chill more than actually compete on the map that still allows me to get loot, um, but with less PvP and less risk. So basically what we're going to do is in the beginning of the raid, instead of heading into all the loot, what you want to do is you want to set up in a sniper position, let the raid die down, and then start looting more so when the scavs start to take control of the map. The reason being is because you're a PMC and your gear is superior, and the whole time that you're waiting for that to happen, there's a potential for you to pick off or rotate to take advantage of other people from a sniper's perspective. So first thing that we need for this is the keys. The reason that this works on a map like Reserve compared to other maps is because the majority of the loot is locked behind doors on Reserve. So because it's locked behind doors, that gives us a guaranteed pool of loot to tap from uh, as long as everyone doesn't take it while we're waiting, right? But nobody ever really loots every single room on reserve, most likely. Very, very rare. Very rare. And if that happens, there's plenty of loose loot to loot too. So we can always walk away with something. But because of the locked doors and stuff, scavs can't really gain access to it. So you can play reserve longer than most other maps and still walk out with a fair bit, fair bit of decent loot. So now what we want to do is make sure our equipment's right. So the first step to this process typically with reserve is whatever spawn point we spawn at, we're going to want to rotate to a sniper position. Now, if we visualize in our head what kind of sniper positions are on reserve and we think of them, you'll probably think that most of them, unless you're on a rooftop, consists of some sort of dark room or dark background. Like for example, when you're inside of the sniper towers and you're standing in them, they're dark green, and most of the time there's a dark shadow behind you. So obviously you're gonna want dark clothing. You're going to want dark rig, dark backpack, dark helmet, and everything. I would, if you're down bad, you could change your kit up and stuff to have even less armor and stuff. You always want to bring in an armor and a rig and a gun and stuff to try to avoid tagged and cursed. But a helmet is kind of optional because if someone does manage to snipe you, you're probably not moving or not paying attention or not going to be able to react because you're going to be dead. So it's up to you and how many rubles you have available. But I do recommend a helmet because with... The penetration fall off a distance now due to this patch the chance of someone ricocheting you if they snipe you from dome for example is fairly high compared to what it used to be so this is what i like to run i try to bring cheap stuff as well in case that does happen to me now as far as guns goes there's two things that you want to do you can either bring a dmr like this and you're gonna want either a dmr like this or a sniper rifle like this because once again the way that bullet and all that stuff works this patches only sniper rifle rounds are really good at sniping so these are two guns that i actually use for my runs like usually right so this bolt action works just fine or any really even just a normal mosin and so does the dmr like this but if you do bring a bolt action you're gonna want to bring a secondary weapon and these are three secondary weapon examples that i recommend aka small smgs or a shotgun or something with you know compact but lethal and the reason that you want a secondary weapon with a, a bolt action sniper rifle is because eventually in the raid we're going to need to push into a building and when we're pushing into a building even though most of the time with our timing there will only be scavs there could be people and there could be a team of scavs so relying on just a bolt action it's dubious you could also bring a pistol and stuff that's fine but I like these because in case there's PMCs, I like to be able to fight a little bit. You don't need to bring a ton of stuff. I would bring just this, one mag in the gun, two extra mags, etc. And then if your metabolism isn't elite, or even if it is, maybe you want to bring food and water because this is the long game on this raid. All right, so let's go into a real one. Oh, yeah. And don't forget your red rebels, I guess. It's not really as important with this because there's a lot of ways you can get out. But red rebel is always the easiest. But if you don't have a Red Rebel, this run is still viable because by the time that you're about to extract, most people are gone anyways. So D2 is usually just peachy. All right, so the first step when you spawn somewhere like this is to run immediately to the closest sniper tower and get up there. Now, there's two ways to play this style of play. This play style. Oh my gosh, I'm going the wrong way going towards the danger i thought i was in a different bucket but there's two ways to play this and i'll go over the super safe way and i'll go over the more risky but pretty fun way so the first step though for both of them is to get up into a tower and you want to get up there before someone has a chance to spot you if you delay then it's only going to get worse 
and as soon as you get in the tower, you're going to want to hide. Now, the reason that we're hiding is because, first of all, the goal of this is to pretty much let all the PMCs go away. And then let us rotate it and control the map versus the scavs. But another reason that you want to lay down is because in the beginning of the raid, everybody is looking for you. Absolutely everybody. Dome might be, shooter board in heaven might be, and where are they going to check? They're going to check the towers. So, what you want to do is kind of lay low for the first, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And if you were to lay in that main tower area, you would probably be good. And the only way someone's going to see you is if they hear you moving around or, or crawling around or anything. But I'm going to show you guys a peek that you can do from a tower like this. And this is kind of how you want to set up if you are going to snipe on this map. You want to have really narrow angles where you focus on just one area of the map and you're exposed as little as possible. And then you just work that angle for as long as you're sitting here. And if you want a different angle, you should go to a different spot because this is pretty much on this tower. This is one of the only safe angles to use and different towers have different angles on different portions of the map. But by doing this, I'm uh, covered from the front. But one thing that we could do also here to play it even riskier is to post up and watch this uh, fence line for the guy rotating from Mark Room. But I'm not going to do that because I would like to try to survive this raid. And that's dubious because he could see me or headshot me or whatever. Even peeking up like that was a bit risky. But what I typically do is I come up here and I lay here and I listen for stuff like that. I listen for people going nuts. Man, I can't see because of the shadow. But he's over there. Alright, well I'm not going to peek that. That's dumb. The weather conditions right now are pretty horrible. But that's also a good thing for us because it's providing us a little bit more cover from everything. If it's foggy for us, it's foggy for other people. Unless they have a thermal, we should be good. But we're going to lay here now while we listen to the sounds of the map and figure out where people are rotating to, what might be on the map, and then kind of plan our routes for later. So while we're laying here, let me talk about that a bit. So the reserve flow kind of goes like this a little bit. So most of the time you have people all around the whole edge of the map. And of course, there's the normal objectives, like there's the two safes at Dome that usually the guy up there loots. There's the marked rooms that most people hit. And then there's drop down and other objectives like that and the underground that people mostly go to. So most of the time, uh, most of the time, most people are going to go down to the bunker and fight the raiders. So they're either going to die or they're going to kill them and leave. And right now, as all these people PvP, people are being eliminated and then people are looting and then they're going to leave. So we're trying to fit right in the window where all the PMCs are leaving and the scavs are spawning, but there's still loot. So not too much later, but a couple key objectives usually remain on the map that we want to go for when the coast does clear up a bit. So the first one that we're going to try to go for for this raid is the four cages down at the bottom of the Hermetic Bunker, because these are usually very overlooked, but they also have enough loot for a squad of three consistently so for one guy it'll be just fine they're also behind locked doors so as long as no one else goes down there we should be fine but when we go down there there's a few ways to identify if it's looted or not safely for someone on metal so besides that there's a couple other objectives um that you want to rotate to that are pretty valuable uh if you have the rbst if you're lucky enough for that you could start there loot white knight and then go down, et cetera, et cetera. But really, it's the world is your oyster at that part. But the flow of the reserve kind of works that reserve is not really a map where most people play it slow because uh, people, the the rate of scav spawning on this map is kind of notorious. And the longer you stay in raid here, typically the worse that it goes because uh, you're going to get sworn by scavs. And there's been points where I've killed like 16 or 20 plus scab players and almost been out of ammo after fighting all the PMCs too. So you really, most people like to run this very efficiently. And that's why this kind of idea works because you can use that against them to make it easy for yourself. Uh, scabs are generally much easier to beat than PMCs. Now, not only, now, now, right now, I remember I said I'm playing it safe guys. Like you could peek up and look out the windows and stuff 
it's a lot of fun and i pick up a lot of shooter board and heaven kills doing that especially if i were to start peeking around i would probably start peeking now i like to get up in the tower and then sit in the tower for a little bit and cover just in case someone saw me go up there i want to wait long enough that they're either going to push or they're going to get bored of holding the angle on me and then uh i don't care if pushing and then if they lose if they hold the angle on me i want them to get bored and leave basically before i start standing up because there there are people that are going to be searching the towers for quite a while and, and paying attention if uh if they see you run up here but uh let's show you how i would go about doing it if i were to do it so first you want to check all the risky angles while you can carefully like this dome can see you in here by the way i've been in a, a dome shootout before while here and then since that's clear we're gonna quickly smoosh over here and block the angle there and we're gonna work this angle and try to keep this pillar in between us and dome so you always want to think and work angles and you're gonna want to try to section off areas that you're gonna check right so here we checked straight very good no one's running straight so our blind spots gonna be cleared then we do a smooth lean around the corner here to hold our angle we have to be a little bit further up and now if this is at the point in the raid where I would start to get more aggressive with my sniping if I was looking to also pick up kills and not just safety loot. A little awkward here. There we go. Make sure to check that your gun has enough clearance to fully go side to side in case you have to just stream. It would hate for you. You, you want to know your boundaries so that if someone runs further than that, you're not going to fuck it up. But typically, I just sit here and look around. Now I will repeat once again, this is incredibly dangerous to just sit here laying because you are noticeable, but because we have so much section pied off, is a pretty slim chance of that happening, but there's always a chance. So like I said, if you're down bad, hiding and laying down in the tower for about 10 to 15 minutes is the strat. Now, how do we know when people leave? Now that is a good question. There's a lot, there's a couple things we can use as indicators for when they leave. The first would be the most obvious when we stop hearing PMC gun sounds, if we can hear them at all, they're probably gone. Now, if someone's suppressed and they're not shooting near you, you're not going to hear them. So that's not always the best one. But if we start hearing lots of scav guns that are typically unsuppressed or we start seeing them run around a lot, that's another indicator we can use. Because if scavs are just running around all willy nilly, you bet your ass there's not many players around, right? Or they'd be dead. Now, beyond that, the other thing that we can look for is if we check our extractions, We'll notice when D2 goes green, that's another great sign. So D2 going green means that someone not only turned on the power, but that they push the button that opens the extraction. Even if you flip the power, that doesn't mean the scav saw me. Scavs are better these days. That might happen. I could take him out, but I don't want to waste my good ammo and I don't want to create any sound. I'll just hide in here while I talk. So when someone presses the button to open the bunker door to exit D2, that is when d2 on the objectives menu goes green so even though that doesn't necessarily mean anything more than one to five people are potentially leaving what it does give you is an indicator of the time of the raid that now is the flow of the raid where people are extracting so that would be ideally the time to move but there's a chance that no one hits it and if no one hits it you're waiting around for nothing so i like to look at the time and we say we're at 30 minutes now let's wait for five to ten minutes see if it turns on if it doesn't turn on or if we don't hear any more shots we'll gauge the map and we'll see if we want to move at that point so we'll do that now is there a good way to tell if power is on before d2 is hit the only way to tell if power is on is by going down there and looking and seeing if the lights are lit up that's about it all right so we've waited about uh 10 minutes since the start of the raid so that's a pretty good time and even though nobody is really extracted we should start thinking about prepping our rotations for securing our looting area now how do we do it what i like to do is i like to rotate around the edge of the map from sniper tower to sniper tower now that is risky and once again you could just wait here but what i like to do what i'm going to do now is i'm going to rotate from here along the fence line over to the marked room and go up into that tower that way I'm overlooking where I'm going to be moving to to start looting. But it's also a safe rotation compared to most because the guy at March usually loots March and leaves. How often are people hanging out there? Not very often. So 
anything is possible. But now we're going to go ahead and move. And we will secure it up. We will check it out. You should also bring medication, and I didn't, but that's okay. Because another good thing about the hermetic bunkers is that there are meds in the medical, uh, in the medical cage. So that's always nice. I'm not too worried about it. Ideally, doing this, you won't get shot. And if you do get shot, you'll probably die instantly from a sniper round. So, meh. All you really need to do this is a Mosin and patience. And food, probably. Okay, so as we push up, we're gonna try to eliminate as many angles from the sniper tower as we can. Everyone always runs out of stamina here, but there's not much you can do about it. And then at this point, I like to cut across, and I like to use this as another barrier in between me and the tower. Checking the train station. And right here is what I would call safe spot number one. This has a ton of cover from most angles and most things. We're gonna check behind us and check around us while we recover our stamina. And most importantly, we're gonna listen. We're also going to be prepared for a fight, because if there's going to be anybody, they're going to be fighting over there, or we're going to be fighting them right here in the marked room. But uh, make sure you're on painkillers, like I already am. And then you're going to watch out for these front-facing three windows here, because people can actually stand up on top of them and shoot out of them. Now, as we're doing this, let's also get some information on the flow of the map. So we come in here, we're going to clear it out, we're going to check on marked room, we're going to see if anyone unlocked the doors. Check the closet. Nobody. Okay, so somebody was here or not, and they didn't loot this, which is cool. But reserve marked rooms are doo-doo these days, as is this. Ah, I got 25k. But what you really want to watch out for is those windows I was speaking about earlier. So very hard to see into them, but very easy to see out. And one thing you will often encounter when someone spawns here is they'll come in here and they will hop up on here, and they will camp the fence line as you run up. And that's why we take the trees and the we hide behind that building, because that's the only blind spot of this approach. But, because we spent so long early in the raid waiting, that's not as likely to happen to us. But if we had rotated here right away, not going to be great. So, now that we've secured that, we can kind of be a little more confident that there's no one around. So we're going to head up into this tower. Could be a guy in the tower, so get ready to kill him. Let's see up here. My voice crack. And then we're gonna close this door to make it look like no one came up here. Alrighty. Now we're gonna isolate we're we're gonna make sure we're secure by checking each tower. Do whatever you think would make it hard as possible for them to shoot you first. And in these towers, it's kind of hard to see because of the shadows and stuff, but you will see, usually see their heads moving around, and I don't see anything. So we're going to scan any other points of areas that could have a potential angle on us. So that we don't get surprised by someone when we poke our head up. And we're good. Alright, so let's check our time again. 25 minutes so we've got about five more minutes and if i don't hear anything or see anything over here in the next five minutes i'm gonna start looting because we've kind of already beaten the initial wave of death that you gotta watch out for on this map the first 10 to 15 minutes on the map are the most dangerous hmm what am i i thought you could i expected to be able to stand up on those here's another pretty mean angle you can use Most of the times, if you're about to see somebody, you're going to know you're about to see them because you'll hear them shooting at something. And then, usually, if I'm trying to be super safe, I'll stay laying down. And if I either hear footsteps or shooting, that's when I'll start to peek because then I'll have a little more information instead of just having my head be popped up. Because right now, we could get sniped from Dome here even. Dome can pretty much snipe the entire galaxy if anyone's up there. But we can also snipe back. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't see anything up there right now. All right, so now what you want to do is you want to wait here until you think it's safe. I'll be honest with you. I think it's safe. So we're going to go ahead. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it don't take that long. I think it's been long enough. So we're going to prep everything. Make sure all your stuff's good. You're hydrated. You're ammoed up. 
Might as well eat too. And now because we're already in this position, it's going to be as simple as getting down into the Hermetic Bunkers. Before we move out, we're going to want to use our good location to just briefly look around again. At this point, you can stand up and move around because we're going to be blatant. If anyone shoots at us, we would want them to shoot at us at this moment, I would say. Before we start running down the stairs and start rotating over. Okay, so I, we didn't get shot, so let's move. So now that we've already visually cleared the area, um, there's not much more we can realistically expect to do. So we're going to push through as quickly as possible so that it remains safe. If the longer you take to push after you just check something, the more chance someone's going to fill the spot that was previously clear, right? So get through it. All right, now I'll show you guys a jump that I like to do that I think is a little bit safer than any other way into the bunker, unless there's someone sniping on dome, but we already checked that. So you run up to here, and then there's a ramp here by the sandbag. You run up the ramp, and then right here you stop sprinting. You keep walking forward, and you go onto the door, and then onto the truck. And that's very hard to snipe someone doing, and unexpected. A lot of people don't know about that. So it's a little better than running around either side. And now that we're down here, this is the first dangerous part. In fact, I hear movement. So what we're going to want to do, we're going to look for people or scabs. If we don't see any scabs, that's a bad sign. There should be scabs down here. And if there aren't any scabs, there's probably people here. So I'm going to look at the crates. <gasps> the crates are open. That's not good. So because the crates are open, most of the loot's probably gone, and somebody's down there. So we're going to go ahead and get the hell out of here. But instead of looting the crates, which is the easiest way to get money, we're just going to start looting all the loose loot around the area. Now, you may say, well, that's no different than a normal loot run. Well, you could play this a lot of different ways, but the idea behind this, and one idea if you're ever trying to have really successful raids, is that if you allow 10 to 15 minutes early, early on in the raid for all the PMCs to kind of do their thing and leave, that's going to reduce the difficulty of your raid by probably a minimum of 40%. Because the most experienced, most intense players are the guys that are getting in and out within 10 to 20 minutes. Scavs are guaranteed down there vanquishing eventually, but because there weren't any, that was a clear indicator that someone was already down there because they would have spawned by this time. And then I scoped in on that crate and I saw that the crate's lid was cracked, meaning that the loot's gone. There's no point in pushing down there and risking anything when there's a guy probably still in the, one of those cages. And with that in mind, we're also going to plan our rotations around the fact that there's a dude down there and we're going to try to get away from there fairly quick. So, uh, typically I would loot down there and I'd be full of loot by that, but we're going to go ahead and I'll show you guys where all the loose loot is or what kind of looting path I would take when this situation hits. It's quite valuable stuff already. I like to come in here. There's also usually some attachments that spawn on this table. Um, and you saw a water filter here. Apparently attachments spawn here too. Always be careful that Gluhar is not in here. The scav boss. He could potentially be in here. You'd probably know though. Alright, so this was already looted. So someone, he probably spawned in here and then came this way and looted this. So we've got to cross out this way now. We'll take a quick glimpse around. This is also a great spot if you spawn near K's to run to right as the round begins. And you could usually snipe these guys running past from the spawns. But that's a whole different video. So, uh, typical reserve. We're just going to commit to the run now. Oh, this is pretty good. Now, this would probably, you know, if something's looted like that, that opens you up to a little bit of risk. But that's Tarkov, isn't it? So let's get in here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That might be the boys. In fact, it is. Throw a grenade to get him to fuck off, maybe. Woo, and we made it. That was close. So that's Gluhar the scab boss that spawned by, uh by the knights. Oh, 
Now we need to find meds. Luckily, we're at the med building. Never forget your meds. What? Hmm, let's loot it. But he didn't loot everything. I have a Zagustin too. I guess, uh, yeah, I'll use it. It's always good to carry stems with you just for this, in case you're a dumb dumb and you forget basic equipment. But this building's really cool. I don't know why people aren't looting all these rooms anymore, but there's a lot of cool stuff that spawns inside of these rooms too, usually. Like stems and stuff on the ground. I might be missing some. Oh, he doesn't want these? Very good. <laughs> Planned. I think having one Zagusin on you is always good. That thing's come in clutch quite a few times. Typically, I just pick up everything. Because after you've waited so long in the raid, you kind of just want to focus on not having wasted all that time by getting killed or something. So getting in and out at this point is recommended. Starting to stutter a little bit. Oh, hey, and we're fine. One one reason I love reserve is because you can really find almost everything in raid if you need to, if you know where it is and you have keys and stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty dangerous building to hang out in. So I'm just gonna keep moving through. I'm gonna move across the street as soon as I heal my chest and I'm gonna get to the next portion of the looting see what's left there and heal as I move from that point it wouldn't be a bad plan either to start engaging Gluhar right now because it's so late in the raid that probably everyone's left or they'd already be doing it but that was super that's super risky and we'll probably end this video pretty quick so we're just going to focus on completing the actual looting route so here inside this area this is cafeteria right by drop down uh these jackets are always clutch and there's uh, a moonshine spawn on those shelves actually there a dead scab back here lots of food spawns and stuff so if you're ever running out of food usually this is a safe place to check the best key to have is rbak so you don't have to jump down you just open the door Looks like this was looted too. These are all the keys that I would recommend. So when everything's looted like this, I'll be honest guys, that's rare. Most people don't loot everything like this, but sometimes people do, which is actually probably a good thing for this video because you would want to follow the same path basically, but uh, you would want to go for the good loot instead of the loose loot that I'm going to show you guys me picking up now. Most of the time, people die in the early in the raid, and they don't have the time to loot everything. So, whoever did, probably killed everybody. But, uh, so, honestly, we have a pretty decent amount of loot. Probably about 300,000 rubles. This is 30, this is 30, this is 20, this is 40, this is 20 each, 20 each squash, 19 each thing. So, yeah, it's a pretty good, decent amount of loot. So, I'm gonna just start extracting now. So because this was all looted, when when a place is looted, you can kind of expect that guy that looted it not to backtrack. So I'm going to take this time to heal my arm here because it's unlikely he's going to come back. And then from here, I'm going to push along the border of the map still, up the dome, skip, scope out dome a little bit, make sure no one's up there, and then leave. And we did see anyone this entire time, and all we had to do was lay down for 10 minutes. But obviously, people were everywhere. And of course, we made smart choices to not put ourselves in danger, such as not going to already looted spots like underground. If we'd gone underground further, we probably would be dead. And uh, that's about it. So let's get in there. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I heard something above me, possibly. I think I'll just push through. I tend to avoid going underground because underground is where all the danger is. And 
if you're in the map room, you can be heard running around. So, I don't know. But it's risky doing this as well. But because we're pushing towards early game spawns and stuff, and these buildings are also early game objectives, typically, something like this is okay. But because we're so late into the raid, watch out now for a lot of scavs. This, this map has been pretty... A lot more chill since Lighthouse came out, because everyone's scavenging Lighthouse. But people do. Like this one right here. Oh, got him. Alright, so whenever you see a scav like that, that's actually a great thing. Because they have a lot of loot on them. So even though it's risky, let's take a look. Okay, cool. Good enough. That's also a benefit by playing the, the raid slow. If you can pick off and pick on the scavs with the good scav karma and stuff, they got some pretty nice items on them sometimes, so... It is what it is. But, the only person we've seen so far is a scav, so our timing's good. And if we look at the extraction now, we'll also notice that D2 has gone green at 12 minutes left in raid, that's not surprising. I wish I'd kind of seen when it did turn green, to get a benchmark time. But, every time, you know, check the extracts periodically and try to take a mental note of when it goes green and try to create a pattern for it because that'll show you the pattern that most people in your region or your service that you've selected typically follow when it goes towards uh, looting and extracting. I find that most people leave around 20 to 25 minutes, the 25 to 20 minute mark. And that's when I start to prep for extraction. But because this is green, if you didn't have a red rebel, I also like to go down when I don't go take D2 or I don't try to take D2 before it turns green. Because when it turns green, that means that somebody made it far enough down there to push the button. And that means they either killed the extract camper, they are the extract camper, or they're leaving with the extract camped stuff. So, either way, all those things mean an easier time for you. And personally, when I have had to take D2, I have had much success waiting until that point. Uh, but I usually like to take the Red Rebel. Now, I have body armor, so I can't take red rebel so maybe we'll go suss it out let's see in here if anyone looted the safes no one had the keys so i think i will just go take d2 we'll see what's like i'll show you guys too how i go about clearing d2 Whenever you do see that shit turn green, though, you really do want to get out kind of around. Because, you know, it gives you a lot of information that someone's gone. But if you waste a lot of time, someone could also fill the space. So I'm going to try to get down there now sooner than later. Gonna turn my flashlight on there's gonna be no hiding after i hit those metal stairs oh i should drink that actually so instead of uh once you hit the metal stairs there's no more stealth but basically i'm going to head down there very very quickly i'm going to make sure there's no extra cappers if i can and i'm going to try to do every trick in the book to bait them into messing up and revealing their location before i push them through. so i'll show you guys some of that now one thing you can do is you can come over here and you can scope down this, and you can make sure that no one's down there. That no one's down there camping at the bottom of the stairs. And if they're stupid enough to peek you, usually it's a pretty easy shot. But after I don't see anybody down there, I go this way. here and check all the spots have your gun up i've had people waiting in that doorway before okay big ass filter here for some reason that's kind of nice to take but should i i don't think i care enough well those are kind of nice though that's a, a fairly valuable part So when I push through here, I like to close up all the doors. 
And then I'm going to PK real quick. Now there's uh, quite a few things you can do to try to secure your attraction here. Hello? Hello? The first one is negotiation. If someone's dumb enough to try to extra cap you and is also going to respond to you on VoIP, then that's good for you, right? So another thing you could do is do this, where you blind fire around a corner with a flashlight on. And what this is going to do is allow you to peek, especially if you lean this stuff, and clear out stuff at a very, very tight angle, while also spooking the shit out of these rats and causing them to pre-fire you if they think, because they think you're actually peeking. But you don't want to spend too much time doing that. So after that, I like to come through here and I like to very thoroughly clear each of the sections. I don't want anything, and it's also going to be harder for them to, to basically kill you from this range than it is if you just run straight at the doorway. I'm not quite sure why this man didn't loot anything, but it is what it is. The fact that it's not looted makes me more suspicious because it looks like it was designed to trap somebody. But we'll, we will see. I come over here, and I peek the side, check the door, close the door, because we're not going to be running away. Most likely. Alright, so check up here. People can get, like, up here or something crazy. People will lay down behind this thing. People will lay down behind this pipe. Hello? And then I usually do this, so that I have a right side peek on the room. I do that just to see if I can spook someone low level into moving around and shuffling, so I can hear them. We very carefully check everything. I just checked very carefully because I didn't wait around for 20 minutes for nothing, you know what I'm saying? But we run up here. Easy peasy. Free loot. It's just that easy, boys. And that's basically it. Pretty much your run is always like that. I probably could have gone and looted earlier. People seem to have left more quickly but if you want to be safe and get some easy rubles then just do something like that and there will be a lot of times where those cages are not looted and you can make even more money like 300k to 500k per run just doing that just for waiting in a space for 10 minutes and that was a 30 minute raid and the reason that this works is because of our stealth and our smart rotations but also because of the meta that people usually typically run reserve very quickly so that's it thanks for watching and good luck when you try it.